the value of n is equals to 5. How? Okay. If 1, 3, 4 base n is equals to 54 base 8, calculate n. Now, for us to solve this equation, all we need to do is to express this and this in base 10. If we can do that, then we equate the two and we'll find the value of n. So, if you're already familiar with a number base, you should know that we are going to multiply this one by uh, n raised to the power 0. That means this will be 0, this is 1, and this will be 2. So, this will be by 0, by 1, and by 2. So, that is what I'm going to do. I've already started something here. So you have this is 1 times n raised to the power 2 because this is 2 like we said. So plus, plus, we move to the next one, 3 times n raised to the power 1. Then the next one plus 4 times n raised to the power 0. So we are actually using the power to deal with that power 0. Now this will be equals to we do the same thing with this, express this, convert this to base 10 as well. So that will now be 5 times 5 times 8. So this will be 0 and this will be 1. So in terms of uh, uh, times of place value so we have that so 5 times 8 raised to the power 1 just like we did that so plus the next one 4 times 4 times 8 raised to the power 0 so we are true with that now let's uh, solve this out we solve this over so we have this is equals to this is equals to okay now 1 times n raised to the power 2 is n raised to the power 2 plus 3 times n raised to the power 1 is 3n then plus 4 times n raised to the power 0, we know that anything raised to the power 0 is 1. n raised to the power 0 is 1. So that's 4 times 1, which is 4, equals to. Now, we have here, this is 5 times 8 raised to the power 1. Anything raised to the power 1 is that same number. So in this case now, 8 raised to the power 1 is 8. So 8 times 5 is 40 plus 4 times 8 raised to the power 0. 8 raised to the power 0, like we already established, is 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. So we are done with that. Now, the next thing, let's collect like terms. This will be equals to n raised to the power 2 plus 3n. Now, we already have plus 4. We repeat that. Now this is plus 4, repeat that. Now this is 40 plus 4, and 40 plus 4 is 44, okay? And if we move it over to this side, we have minus 44, and we have 0 down here, we have 0 down here. So what I did was 40 plus 4 is 44, so we we're collecting like them, so we move the 44 over to this side. We have minus 44. Now that will be equals to n raised to the power 2 plus 3 raised to 3n. Now plus 4 minus 44. That will give us minus 40, which should be equals to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation, we just factorize this or use whatever method you are most comfortable with. 
So I'm going to factorize this using the factorization method. Now, how do we do that? If I factorize this, now that is to say that you multiply this first term n raised to the power 2 by the last term minus 40. If you do that, you'll be having minus you'll be having minus of 40 n squared. Now you get two numbers that when you multiply them, they will give you minus 40 n squared. And when you add up those two numbers, you will get plus 3n. So if you do that correctly, you are going to have two factors which are going to be 8 and minus 5 plus 8 and minus 5. So if I use those two factors to, re to replace this, this plus 3n, I'm going to be having n square plus 8n minus 5n. So those two will replace this plus 3. I just factorizing this. Now I still have my minus 40 over here. Still have my minus 40. Now this whole thing is equals to 0 here. Just like we have. Now the next thing we are going to do, we will just group them. So let's group them so that it will be easy for us to factor out. So we group them. Now what is common here, if you check the common factor here is n. n we have n here, we have n here. So n is common. So I'm going to factor at n. Now n we go into n, n square, you have n. So if n should cancel one of the n here or divide this, you have n left. Plus. Now if n should go into this, if n should factor or let's say 8n divided by n, you have 8 left because the n would have cancelled that. Now I'm bringing in my sign here, minus, going over to this, I have 5n minus 40n. What is common between this and this is 5, because 5 can divide this, 5 can equally divide this. So I'm going to factor 5 out. Now if I do that, at the end of the day I'm going to have this, 5 going to 5n, that is 5n divided by 5, I will have n left. Now, minus, we divide minus, or minus, minus, we have plus, so plus over there. 5 going to this 40, or 40 divided by 5, you have 8. So, we are done with that, equals to 0. Now, if you notice, you find out that these two brackets are equal. The values in the two brackets are equal, so we can just take one of them. So, that will now be uh, n plus 8. Now we take the uh, let's say we take the values outside the brackets. So that will now be we have n here. Let's create a bracket to put that. We have n and we have minus five. So we have that, and this is equals to zero. So we have this setup. Now we continue. Now, if two numbers multiply themselves and we have zero. It is true that either this bracket is equal to zero or this is equal to zero for this statement to be valid. So in that case, it therefore means n plus 8 is equal to zero or n minus 5 is equal to zero. It's equal to zero. Now, if that is true, we solve for n here. n will be equals to move up the 8 to this side you have 0 minus 8 that will be minus 8 or n is equals to this is minus uh, 5 crossing over to this side become plus 5 so that is 5 now we know that the value of a base the base of a number cannot be a negative the base of a number cannot be a negative. So since the base of a number cannot be a negative number, it therefore means that the value of n will be 5. The value of n will be 5. Equals to 5. So that is the answer to this question. So when you are solving this, just take your time simplify as much 
and solve whatever equation that uh, comes with the work you're dealing with. Okay.